now that we've got our result from rb2d.cast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the results from our array hit buffer into a new list. So let's add that list. It's going to be a list of raycast hit 2d objects. And it's going to be called hit buffer list. And this is going to be equal to a new list of raycast hit 2d with a length also of 16. And so what we're doing here is we're going to copy only the indices from the hit buffer array that actually hit something. So we're going to have a list just of our current active contacts. So we are going to initially clear that list so that we're not using old data. And then we are going to loop over that list and take the Raycast hit 2D objects from hit buffer and copy them into the list or add them into the list. So we're going to say for I and we're going to use count as our limit for our for loop. So we're only going to copy over the entries that actually have something in them. And then we're going to call hit buffer list dot add and we're going to pass in hit buffer I. So each entry from the array is going to get copied over to the hit buffer list. Now we have a list of objects which are going to overlap our physics objects collider. So the next thing that we want to do is check the normal of each of those Raycast hit 2D objects to determine if the thing were to determine basically the angle of the thing that we're colliding with. We're going to loop over hit buffer list and compare the normal to a minimum ground normal value. So first let's add the for loop. So we're going to say for int i, and then we're going to use hit buffer list dot count. First of all, we're going to declare a vector two, which is going to be called current normal. And that's going to be equal to no, current normal. And that's going to be equal to hit buffer list I dot normal. So we're going to check the normal of each of our Raycast hit 2Ds in our list. Then we want to compare it to a minimum value. So we are going to add, and this we're going to make public. We're going to add a public float, which is going to be called min ground normal y. And this is going to be equal to 0.65. And I have actually some little graphics that I made to show, to illustrate this. Um, and I'll show those in one second. Um, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to determine uh, if the player is grounded or not, right? And the main manifestation of that in our game is that the player is either going to play her falling animation or her idling standing still animation. So we're going to check if current normal dot y is greater than min ground normal y. And we are going to do the following. So we're going to use this to set the player's grounded state. So what we're checking here is if the angle of the object that we're going to collide with means it would be considered a piece of ground or something we can stand on. So if we didn't check this, we might get into a situation where a player is has jumped towards a vertical wall, right, and is colliding with it, but because they're registering a collision, might think, oh, I'm standing on the ground, right, and, and switch to the grounded state. So by checking the normal, we can only set the player to grounded when the player is standing on the ground, on ground of a certain angle. Now, it's worth noting that this controller will not allow players to slide down slopes unless they're sending input to move, aka moving horizontally. 
So it's possible to get into corner cases where the player registers as not grounded when standing on a slope that's too steep. So if it's important to allow this behavior, then you're gonna to wanna to extend the controller or you could simply choose a maximum allowed slope for your levels and tell your designers not to put in slopes that exceed that. So I have a little image that I made here. So this shows just visualizing the ground normal. So here we can see that the ground normal is a green line, which is perpendicular to the surface that the player is standing on, right? So in the first image, it's pointing straight up. In this, in the middle image, it's not visible, right? Cause she's jumping, there's no contact. And then in the third image, we can see it's pointing at this sort of 45 degree angle away from the slope that she's standing on. And we have, the, that's the green line and then the velocity uh, is represented by the red line. So hopefully that visual makes it a little bit easier to understand um, what I'm talking about here. I know it's a little abstract. So we're gonna need a Boolean variable to keep track of whether the player is grounded or not. So we're gonna add that. And then in fixed update, after we apply our gravity modifier, we're going to just always set grounded to equal false. So until a collision is registered that frame, grounded is always going to be considered false. Uh, and because of gravity, right, she's always gonna be pushed down and therefore uh, will register that collision and set it appropriately. And then here, if our conditional evaluates to true, we're going to add grounded equals true. Now, the way that our movement is going to be handled is, as I mentioned before, we're going to be addressing the movement along the x as one call to this movement function and the movement along the y as a separate call uh, to this movement function. And this is because it makes it easier to handle slopes. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a Boolean to the function signature to say a bool called Y movement, right? And because right now we're dealing with vertical movement, we're going to set when we call movement from fixed update, we're gonna add true. Now, in our collision checking, we're gonna check if we're moving along the Y, then we need to add a variable for our ground normal. This is going to be a protected vector two called ground normal. And then we are going to, if we're moving along the Y, we're going to set ground normal to equal current normal and current normal dot X to equal zero. Now, we have our current normal the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the dot product of it and our velocity and store this in a variable called projection. So outside of the braces for our if statement, we are going, but inside our for loop, right? We are going to declare a new float called projection and that's gonna be equal to vector two dot dot and we're gonna pass in the velocity and the current normal. So what we're doing here is we're getting the difference between the velocity and the current normal and determining whether we need to subtract from our velocity to prevent the player from entering into another collider. And, and the situation that we want to avoid is Let's say we have a sloped ceiling above the player and they jump up and hit their head. We do not want to just kill their velocity dead and have them fall straight down. We don't want them to pass through the ceiling. 
but we want them to kind of hit their head and then scrape along the ceiling a little bit, continuing their horizontal movement. So we're going to calculate this using vector two dot dot, and then we're going to check if projection is less than zero, meaning this is returning a negative number, then we are going to set velocity to equal velocity minus our projection multiplied by the current normal. So we're going to cancel out the part of our velocity that would be stopped by the collision. Lastly, before setting the position, we're going to check if the collision in our list's distance is less than our shell size constant. And if it is, we're going to use the shell size for our distance instead, and this is to prevent us from getting stuck inside other colliders. So we are going to add a float called modified distance, and this is going to be equal to hit buffer list i dot distance minus shell radius. And then we're going to check, or we're going to say distance equals modified distance if distance is less than modified distance. We're going to use modified distance, otherwise we're going to use distance. And so finally, we can actually set the position of our rigid body 2D, taking into account the modified velocity based on our collision projections. So we are going to say rb2d.position equals now move dot normalized times distance and save and let's take a look so back in unity we can play our scene ta-da our box now collides with the floor and we've got our collision checking working so in the next segment, we are going to implement, now we've got vertical movement, right? Which is in, so far only controlled by gravity. In the next segment, we are going to add horizontal movement, uh, which is we're gonna leverage our existing movement function, uh, just pass in some different values. And, but before we move on to that, let me take a look at the chat and see if I can answer some questions. So distance is modified if, let me put the script back on screen. So we set the distance, right? And we're going to ignore all of this if the distance is not greater than the minimum move distance, right? Then we're just going to set the position and it's not going to move, right? If the distance is greater than, than the minimum move distance, we want to modify the distance only if the distance is going to result in a value smaller than our shell size, which is going to cause us to stick into a wall or something. Um, J-Y-A-K-A-L-I-C, J-A-C-L-I-C, asks if you can apply bounciness. You would need to write that bouncing code manually. That's what we're doing here is every movement of the box is scripted. If you want to use the physics 2D system, you don't need to do this. Uh, you could just apply a physics material to the box in a rigid body and turn on gravity, but you're not going to get the kind of detailed uh, game feel and control that we're going to get from doing this by hand. No, physics materials will not work with this. <laughs> 